Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I'm gonna share three really easy and delicious meals with you. For our first meal this week, I am making Philly cheese steak chili, and we're making Stephen's grandmother's recipe of cornbread. I've got that recipe linked below. I'm not gonna go through it tonight, um, but if you're interested in that, just check out the description box. So tonight we're gonna be using this cast iron skillet, which was Stephen's grandmother's cast iron skillet. It's a really cool story. You should totally go check out that video. Here's our ingredients for the, our oven's ready. Here's our ingredients for the cornbread. And then we have our ingredients for the Philly cheesesteak chili. I'm excited about this one. eight ounces of sliced, I think this was Baby Bella's maybe. Um, I'm not going to be using this whole thing. We are halving the recipe tonight. So I'm gonna use about half of this and maybe not even quite half because Cole doesn't like it. So we're not gonna put mushrooms in his bowl. We're gonna get started. I'm using my small Dutch oven today since I am halving this recipe. I'm gonna heat it to about medium high. Change of plans, we're gonna get started on the cornbread and get it in the oven before we start on the soup. There's one ingredient you don't put in cornbread. You know what that ingredient is? I shall do. Sugar. You don't put sugar in. No, not in southern cornbread. Okay, while I am greasing our skillet, I need to know, do you put sugar in your cornbread? No judgment here if you do. We do like Jiffy corn muffin mix, and that does have sugar in it. But when we're talking about cornbread, no sugar for us. Okay, this is going in my oven for about 30 minutes. And now we're gonna get started on our chili. So like I mentioned, I am halving this recipe. So I only need one pound of ground beef. So we're just going to cube up just a few ounces of this Velveeta cheese. This is gonna go in at the very end. Are you sure you like the bell bee does? You do? Oh, okay, don't kill me. So I waited until this had a really good sear on it before I started breaking it up. You don't want it to be too fine of crumbles. Once your meat has browned up like ours has, you're just going to remove it out and set it to the side. Mine is 93.7, so it doesn't have a whole lot of fat, but we are gonna leave that fat in there because we're gonna be putting our veggies in there and sauteing those. All right, I'm gonna add maybe a tablespoon and a half of butter. Let that melt down. Okay, now that our butter has pretty much melted down, we're gonna add in our bell pepper and our onion. And we're just gonna saute this for like three to five minutes just to get it really soft and translucent. While these are cooking, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper too. This has softened up quite nicely. Now it's time to add in everything except the mushrooms because, you see this little pot back here? We're gonna scoop out coals and put it in here. He does not like mushrooms. And then I will add mushrooms to the big pot. I've got a can of pinto beans that I have drained and rinsed. I'm gonna add in a heaping tablespoon of tomato paste. We need about two cups of beef stock. It's about half of this. Now I need to add in a tablespoon of Worcestershire, 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 the W sauce. That's what I'm gonna start calling it. I'm gonna start calling it the dub. 
And lastly, I need about a tablespoon and a half of chili powder. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Now let's mix this together and bring it to a boil. And once it comes up to a boil, then I will remove Cole's portion. Oh, I need to put the meat back in there too. But I'm gonna let this come up to a boil first and then we will add our mushrooms. That did not take long at all. So let me add our meat back in. Okay, let's get Cole's portion out before we go and ruin it with mushrooms, as he would say. <laughs> okay. Now, now we add in the good stuff. All right, let me turn this heat down. We're gonna just simmer this for about 25 minutes or so. If that ain't pretty, This looks good. Mmm, that's really good. Really good. Love the chili flavor in there. It's uh, definitely with the uh, the mushrooms and the peppers. You you get that ch you know chili uh, or that Philly cheesesteak sort of flavor to it. Mmm. Okay. So I have tried it and I really do like it. I love that this cheese kind of melts the way it does, this Velveeta. It's perfect. I think Cole said he likes it, but he said it's just basic. But I think those mushrooms take it up a whole nother level. He says I'm rubbing it in, but I'm not the one who doesn't like mushrooms. That would be on you, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm actually putting on an apron today. Are you proud? I just don't want to get, I'm, I'm making something today that has spaghetti sauce and I'm notorious for splattering that. So I'm putting on my new apron. I'll show it to you in just a second. But tonight we are having Italian sausage and cheese stuffed manicotti. And it does not use ricotta cheese. So I'm pretty excited about that. I need to tighten this up. Okay, I have my apron situated and I have one that says it's fall y'all. I got this from Hobby Lobby not too long ago. I was so excited to see it. I very rarely wear aprons though. I need to be better about it because I do stain my clothes. I get grease on it. I, I need to be better about it. Y'all have seen, if you've watched, <laughs> especially the recent What's For Dinners, I'm very clumsy in the kitchen. I make spills and messes all the time and sometimes they end up on me. So I need to be better about wearing aprons. I have some really cute aprons, so. Let me show you all of the ingredients we need for today's meal. We're gonna get it together. It's a really easy one. It just takes some time in the oven. Okay, to get started, I've got our spinach that I have already torn off most of the long stems from. If you've been here for a minute, I missed one. I always miss some. If you've been here, you know I can't stand the stems on spinach. Um, so I tried to tear off as many as possible. And now I just need to roughly chop the spinach and then I need to finely dice this onion. It called for a whole onion, but I had a really large onion, so I decided only to do half of it. So I told y'all, I don't even have the crinkling of any cheese or anything, but she sees this come out and she is over here meowing at my feet. This cat though. I'm actually going to use two different attachments. I'm gonna use this with the mozzarella. For the Parmesan, I'm gonna use this smaller one so that we can grate it instead of shred it. 
I only need three fourths a cup of grated Parmesan cheese and you could of course just use bagged cheese or probably even the grated stuff, the craft stuff. But I'm going to, I like to keep a block of Parmesan on hand just because we love fresh Parmesan. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of this block and grate it. Now I'm gonna use the larger one and shred our mozzarella. I did get a fresh mozzarella ball. We're gonna see how this goes. I don't, I've never tried to shred one of these. So this might be a disaster because it's so soft. I cut it in half. Y'all, is this about to be a disaster? Tell me it's not, tell me it's gonna be okay. We're about to find out. Oh, it's good. Ta-da. Now that I have all my ingredients ready, I'm gonna heat this water to high and we're going to boil our manicotti noodles in here. I also need to preheat the oven. Let me check to see what I need to preheat it to. 375. While that is starting to heat up, I've got this large skillet. I've got a pound of Italian sausage Mine is just the mild, you could use the hot or even the sweet Italian sausage. The recipe calls for 1.25 pounds, but this will do. I've got it heating up to medium high. I'm gonna get a good sear on the bottom before I add in my onion. I'm gonna salt my water. And I'm gonna add in my manicotti. So I've got a helper in here. Steven is not feeling that great today. He's just overly tired, so he's resting right now. He just finished with a long day of work. He's resting, so I have a different helper in here tonight. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. I am letting these boil for seven to nine minutes. You don't want to, to overboil them, so I'm gonna keep an eye on them. He is working on this, and once this browns up, we're gonna add in our spinach. Okay, our Italian sausage is all the way cooked through. So Cole is just going to put in all of our spinach and we're just gonna let that wilt down. And then we're gonna remove it from the heat. Okay, our manicotti has been boiling for seven minutes. I just checked it, it seems to be good. So I'm gonna drain that. And we're gonna remove this from the heat. Now we just need to let this cool for about five minutes. So I've got one egg, he's going to beat that for me. It's gonna go into the Italian sausage mixture. I've got a nine by 13 dish here. Cole is gonna spray it with some Pam. Okay, we've let this cool for about five minutes. I'm gonna add in our egg. We're gonna add in half of this mozzarella cheese. And we're gonna add in about half of this Parmesan cheese. Now we're just gonna add a little salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I did not drain my sausage. I didn't really have that much fat left behind, but if yours is super fatty, greasy, you can definitely drain it. I've got a 24 ounce thing of spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce. I'm gonna add about half a cup to the bottom of our dish. Okay. Here comes the fun part, Cole. You excited? Oh yeah. <laughs> Now I need to stuff each one of these with this mixture over here. So let me pull this a little bit closer. There we go. Uh, we're gonna see how messy I can get. I'm pretty sure I'll do a good job of getting super messy. Okay, 
once you get it stuffed, I'm just gonna put it right here in the middle and just keep repeating the process. I've got as many as I can in there. I still have some meat mixture left over. So the recipe is just said to kind of just stick it wherever you can. I may just drizzle some across the top as well. And then we're gonna cover it in our pasta sauce and then tightly cover it with some aluminum foil. That's the rest of our meat mixture. I'm gonna add all of our sauce on top. Now this is going in the oven at 375 for 30 to 35 minutes. It's been 30 minutes. Let me turn this light on. There we go. It's been 30 minutes. I'm gonna top it with the remainder of the mozzarella and Parmesan cheese, and then we're gonna put it back in uncovered for another 20 minutes. Don't act like you hadn't already had a bite. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Where where are you going? She's gonna have to walk away from it. <laughs> we are all eating at different times tonight. We have different things going on. There's a Zoom call going on that Steven's a part of right now for something. So we're all eating at different times. Cole was able to taste test first. You just saw his reaction. I'm eating now, and I have to say, I like it better than lasagna. I don't know. I just think it has a different flavor. Maybe it's because it's missing the ricotta cheese. Maybe it's the spinach added in. I don't know, but it's so good. Cole loves it. He said, you've got to make this one again, Mom. Okay, baby, it's finally your time to eat. <laughs> Love the flavor profile of mm -hmm. the sausage um, with this. I love this kind of sausage, it's my favorite. So to have this in, stuffed in these manicotti mm -hmm. shells is delicious. It really is, and I think that spinach mm -hmm. adds a little extra mm -hmm. something too. I don't think you can over exaggerate the flavor of this sausage, I love it. It's just so good, there's just this. All the seasonings in there. So much flavor. So much flavor. Yeah. Well, mm. good. I'm so glad. Okay, y'all. So you heard from all three of us on this one. It was definitely a hit. Okay, it's our third meal of the week, and y'all know what that means. It's Subby Supper Night. When I opened the email for this Subby Supper, it caught my attention immediately, and I knew it was one that we were going to give a, a try. It is called Chex Chicken, and it comes from Jessica. Jessica is from Kentucky, and she and her husband, Alex, have been married for a little over a year. They have three fur babies. Their fur babies' names are Zeus, Katie, and Cadet. I love it. Jessica really loves to cook for her husband, and she knew that she needed this recipe because it is a family favorite on his side of the family, so she got the recipe so she can make it for him, but she said it's very common for this to be what they make on family get-togethers and, I guess, birthdays that type of thing because it's one of the family's favorites. So we're excited to give it a try and hopefully it'll become one of our favorites too. Okay, here's everything that we need. I've got two chicken breasts that were very thick so I cut them in half and we need some butter, a half a stick of butter that I'm gonna melt. Not a half a stick, a half a cup, which is the whole stick, just kidding. And I've got some seasoned salt and some black pepper, some sour cream, some all-purpose flour, 
cream of mushroom soup, some ground thyme, and some corn checks. The first thing I'm gonna do is measure out three cups of this corn checks into this gallon size bag and crush it up really, really well. this in the microwave. I've got this whole stick of butter that I need to melt. Okay, so now it's time to combine everything that we're going to kind of roll the chicken in. So I need my half a cup of butter that has been melted. I've got a third a cup of all-purpose flour. And I have a teaspoon of seasoned salt and about an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. And then in my second bowl over here, I'm just going to pour our crushed checks. Like there's a whole piece right here. How did I miss that? No, sir, you're getting crushed. So I'm just going to combine all of this together. So I've got the first station here. We're gonna dip the chicken here and then dip it into here. And then I've got this baking sheet that I have lined with parchment paper. I'm gonna put them all here and it's gonna go in the fridge so that the butter can kind of solidify. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. I'm gonna check it in about 15 to 20 minutes and then I think it'll be ready to go in the oven. Okay, that only took like 10 minutes or so for it to solidify. And I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. These are gonna go in for 20 to 25 minutes. I'll just check them and make sure that they reach 120, 120, no, 165 degrees Fahrenheit on the inside. And while these go in, I'm gonna start making some mashed potatoes. are going to come up to a bowl. Our chicken is in the oven. I need to make the sauce for the chicken. I've got a can of cream of mushroom soup. A half a cup of sour cream. I'm just going to stir this together and then I'm going to add in my ground thyme. She didn't say that it had to be brown, she just said thyme, but that's all I have on hand, so that's what we're gonna use. I added more than I expected to, <laughs> but I think that'll be okay. She said that she uses more than the recipe calls for, so let's just cross our fingers on that one, but just don't doubt really easily. Oops. Okay, I brought this over to the stove, and I'm just going to let this simmer while we um, cook the chicken. So I'm gonna turn it to medium first just to get it going, and then I'll turn it down to low. No idea what this is gonna taste like. So Steven was working the whole time I was cooking, which is why I had to film myself and the angles probably weren't that great. <laughs> That's okay. Wow. <laughs> That's really good. Is it? Yes. I was a little like, what is this gonna taste like? Uh-oh, we got two That thumbs. is great. And a face. This is good, Jessica. Mm. Thank you so much for sending this. So what would you describe it as? Like, is good. it similar to, good. Thank you, Cole, for your input. Is it similar to anything else you've ever had? Um, 
it tastes like I mean, it, it does taste like the, the checks does. I mean, it tastes like what you would expect a like a breaded, a baked breaded chicken to taste like. But okay. it has that crunch that you don't normally get with a baked breaded yeah, chicken. Yeah. What um, do you think about the cream on top? The sauce on top. Yes, yeah, that's really good. It enhances the flavor. Um, Can you see why it would be a favorite of someone's? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this would be like this is a fantastic alternative to. Like fried, fried chicken. chicken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got that crunch. The fried chicken and gravy type thing. Yeah. I mean, it still has the the, the rich flavor because of the checks. Sweet. Oh, yeah, well, really thank cool. you, Jessica, for sending this in. I am excited to give it a try. I'll jump back on and let you know what I think here in just a second. My thoughts is this is a lot like fried chicken and gravy without being fried chicken and gravy. So good. So, Gracie Lou and I are sitting here on the couch. She can't be bothered. I wanted to come on here and say thank you so much for watching this week's What's for Dinner. I forgot to film an outro. So I thought I would just jump on here really quickly and say thank you. Uh, the last meal that I filmed this week, I filmed on my new phone using, you know, the new phone camera. And I was having some difficulty. So if you noticed quality changes in the last night, the subby supper, I'm sorry. I think I've gotten all of that worked out now. Fingers crossed. I'll mess with it a little bit more before I do any more filming. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family before you leave. I've got some bloopers coming up for you. And I do these types of videos all the time. So if you're looking for food inspiration, this is the place to be. Thanks, y'all. See you next time. Bye. What? You like my icy hot patch? <laughs> Ain't it pretty? Yeah. <laughs> so fab. It is. It's a new trend. We gotta cut, put a good bit of that fat in there, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotta have your badonka donk. That's right. That's what that is. A good healthy dose of it. <laughs> burning finger. Ha! <laughs> I was burning my finger. That steam is hot.